What's the word, y'all? Another domino has fallen. DeJounte Murray just got traded to the Pelicans about two hours ago. Uh, but I'm finally here to record a video. Now, originally, I was out playing some golf, and I saw this first tweet. New Orleans has landed DeJounte Murray to anchor the Pelicans' backcourt. And I was like, whoa, that's huge. Because I feel like for the last month or two, everybody had been mocking DeJounte to the Pelicans. But it was more like a win-win thing where it was uh, Brandon Ingram going back to Atlanta. Trey Young has a new running mate in Brandon Ingram, and the Pelicans finally, ha finally have a real point guard. But instead, that, that's not even what the package is. It is Larry Nance. It is Dyson Daniels. It is a 2025 first-round pick via the Lakers. That was the pick that they deferred. They could have took it this year. They decided to bet against LeBron James and stuff, his old age, and maybe next year they missed the playoffs completely, and that pick is a little bit more valuable. Um, and then a 2027 first-round pick that is the least favorable of the Bucks and the Pelicans one. So it is not the trade that we mocked up, but it's a trade that we like, man. The Pelicans um, have been an interesting team, let's say that, because Wolves also had this one. And I knew it was bad. We had made videos about the Pelicans, how they, as a team, didn't make sense. The fact that they were good, but also awful in the clutch and also never won fourth quarters. It made zero sense for them to be a playoff team, but they, they thugged it out. It also made zero sense that their starting five had a negative net rating, but somehow they made the play, like... It is a team with a bunch of improbable circumstances that still led to W's. And that was one of the reasons why I really enjoy watching them play. But Wolves hit this tweet. Because I saw a lot of things. Because, again, I was a little bit late to the party here where um, people were saying, oh, I guess that means that DeJounte Murray is getting traded. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Brandon Ingram is getting traded in a different deal. And that's still possible. But Wolves said that the Pelicans are trying to keep Brandon Ingram around. Here's the actual tweet. New Orleans was 0-24 when trailing enter in the fourth quarter. 2-14 and 14 in close games. And see, Murray is a player who can generate offense late in games. Pels remain committed to the core that includes Zion, CJ McCollum. And they're trying to find common ground with Brandon Ingram on the contract. So it's still possible that Brandon Ingram could get traded. But they're trying to run it out. And whoa, what a pickup, man. Considering the price that you paid, I, I love it. Uh, I still don't know what that lineup looks like, assuming that let's say they do figure something out with Brandon Ingram, because in my personal opinion, when I when I looked at the Pelicans going into the off this offseason, I thought there was no world where Herb Jones and, and Trey Murray for the third weren't the starting wings on this team. And if you extend Brandon Ingram here, there's a world where neither of those two guys are the starter for the team. I don't, I just don't know. I just, I just don't know. Again, this is a good get given the, the price that you pay. You've been looking for a point guard. You've needed a point guard. And DeJounte Murray is a, let's be raised a point guard. The experiment in Atlanta, him playing off ball, full, not full time, but him playing off ball just didn't really work out. And it felt as though when Trey Young went, out his in, went down with his injury and they really allowed DeJounte to be the point guard, things looked a little bit better for him specifically. He even had so many, he had a lot of game winners this year. So he helps that with that 0-24 with Trill in the fourth quarter. But you, you have so many starter quality players. And the Pelicans... I think earlier in the season on the Kenny Beach and podcast, we were ranking teams in their depth. The Pelicans were so high on the list because they had players who were like, oh, Brandon Ingram is injured. Oh, that's cool. We're going to have we gonna have Trey Murphy III jump in. Oh, Cesar McCullough is injured. Hey, let's have Dyson Daniel start. Oh, you have this guy injured. Oh, Larry Nance is here to play full-time five minutes. Like, they just were a really deep team, and they continue to be that because, like, I don't know what this lineup looks like. It said they're committed to Zion and, and Cesar McCullough as a core. So that means that you're not sending C.J. McCollum to the bench. So it is DeJounte Murray, C.J. McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Z, and five-man to be named later? Is, is, is it Eve Missy? Is that how you pronounce it? Missy? Is that your five-man? Because Val is a free agent. I don't think they're going to be bringing him back. But that means that Herb Jones and Trey Murray for the third are, are, are delegated to the bench. And Herb Jones, one of the best defensive players in basketball, y'all. So they have a lot of decisions to make. And maybe that does mean that they're going to gear themselves up for a different trade with Brandon Ingram, where maybe they're not getting back now talent, but replenishing some of these draft capital picks. I don't know. It's a worthy bet just because you desperately needed a point guard. And I remember when they traded for CJ McCollum again, I thought it was a good trade on paper, but it didn't answer a lot of their questions. And CJ did a fine job, an okay job, translating from a full-time two to mostly a one it just didn't work out. I did enjoy point Zion too, but you really needed a guy to get things going. And again, it was one of the worst clutch offenses in basketball. DeJounte is a guy that could settle some things down. Let's talk about the other side of this trade for the Atlanta Hawks. I'm, I'm seeing people clown the Atlanta Hawks for this trade. I don't hate it. Given, the, given where the league is, right? And given that we all knew 
If you have watched more than three games of the Atlanta Hawks this season, you know that they had to make a decision between those two guards, right? So you knew, and if, if we knew at home, then general managers across basketball knew that DeJounte Murray's value wasn't as high because you weren't going to bring both of them back together, right? So I think a lot of people thought that because it wasn't Brandon Ingram, this is an L trade. I don't, I don't feel that way. This is a team that does that, that traded a bunch of picks to get DeJounte Murray. And if I'm not mistaken, one of the picks they traded away was their own 2025. And the 2024 draft is over and everything. And everybody has shifted gears to 2025. And my God, the way people are talking about 2025 draft class, it's, it's worth having a pick that is a Lakers pick. And let's be real, the Lakers still have LeBron. They still have Anthony Davis. It's probably not going to end up the first overall pick in this draft. But it's still a pick to attach yourself to for 2025. Dyson Daniels is a worthy bet. He's not much on offense, other than him being a positive passer. He's not much on offense. But if you've been watching, he is one of my favorite defensive players in basketball. He's going to get deflections out of this world, and I think Atlanta Hawks fans are going to like him. This is kind of like, sometimes, especially this is kind of, this is a new regime for Atlanta, right? This is a new regime. This is uh, uh, Landry Fields making these decisions. He made a decision yesterday trading uh, Adrian Griffin, AJ Griffin for what, the 40-something overall pick in his, in his class? He's obviously trying to shape the roster to his liking. But I think this can be, can be an addition by subtraction type of thing. Again, you're obviously losing a lot of talent with DeJounte Murray going out of the door. But I, again, I don't hate this. This gears you up from a couple different options. Obviously, you continue to play alongside Trey Young and try to build a team around him. If that's not working in February, you just replenish two first-round picks for DeJounte Murray, and you can also get more first-round picks for Trey Young. So this is not one of them trades where I'm immediately looking like, oh, my God, this team's super finessed because there is no leverage from one of the teams. Like, we all we have to continue to think about that. Like, a, a, a true talent for talent trade, objectively, the Atlanta Hawks lost the trade. Talent for talent. But that's not what trades are in basketball all of the time. You got two first-round picks for a guy that you knew you weren't going to bring back. I feel like that's a win. I don't know exactly what the starting lineup looks like for Atlanta. This means that, that you're pairing Dyson Daniels with Trey Young in the backcourt. Because I think it could work out if, it's a big F, if you feel like Dyson can develop his three-point shot a little bit more. But having an offensive-minded guy to play alongside Trey Young in the backcourt makes a ton of sense to me. I think it will be looked at a little bit differently if, like, the first overall pick in this draft was somebody that everybody was in love with. Because then you look at the Atlanta Hawks core and you're like, okay, like, yeah, Trey Young is is still a young player. And Trey Young is still a young player. I know that it don't feel that way because he's been in our lives for a long time and he had a conference finals appearance at once upon a time. He is still a young player. It's just more a matter of fact for him. Is he okay and willing to maybe have a season or two with a team is not competing for playoff spots? But brother, that's kind of what the last couple seasons feels like. So take a take a small step back with the idea of redoing the team around Trey Young, or again making a decision down the line that Trey Young is not the guy you want to build around. I if I'm grading this trade for the Pelicans based on today, I'm giving it like a smooth A, not an A plus, but a smooth A because I do believe they still have more decisions to make on who's starting or who's staying. And for the the uh, Atlanta Hawks. Maybe it's a C plus. Like it's a it's above passing grade for me personally, um, and maybe I'm just a big Dyson Daniels fan. Maybe that's maybe that's really what it is. But I don't hate this as much as what seems like the consensus is on Twitter. Um, good good trade, good trade, fun trade, fun trade. I feel like there's more dominoes to fall. Everybody keeps talking about um, what's going on with Paul George in the next 48 hours. So once Paul George makes his decision, I feel like a lot of other things is gonna happen. What's happening with Demar Derozan? Zach Levine, because y'all know that's where my head is at. Um, other guys like like Tobias Harris. There are so many wings out there that maybe won't help you go over the top, but people are gonna be interested in. And once PG is making that decision, then it is what it is. Um, so I think about if there are any other wrinklings in this trade that's worth talking about. Not not really. All right, we'll just leave it at that. Um, I again, I hold the right to change my opinion about a trade, but right now. It's a fun. It's a fun.